Hi, I'm Larry Gifford. You've been hearing my voice on the last 11 stories about Parkinson's. I bet you didn't know that voice belongs to somebody who has Parkinson's too. I was 45 years old when I was diagnosed, but I started feeling the symptoms much earlier. But let me take you back. I was born in Westerville, Ohio, the quiet, peaceful village just north of Columbus, Ohio, the state capital. Well, Westerville uh, is, is a place where the Giffords have been for many generations. Uh, in fact, uh, I think we go back four generations to Otterbein College, which is in Westerville, uh, including myself. That's where I graduated from and I learned how to do radio. Uh, radio uh, has been my passion. I've been doing it for more than 30 years. I was on the air for a while and I'm now I'm the national director of talk radio uh, for a company in Canada called Chorus. I was actually voted at one point in high school to be the one person that never left Westerville. <laughs> and uh, I actually traveled quite far from Westerville. Uh, next stop was Dayton, Ohio, where I was uh, doing radio, and then I moved on to Philadelphia. And that's where I met my wife, Rebecca. We've been married for 22 years, and uh, she's been on this journey uh, with me. You know, first it was a radio journey, and now it's a Parkinson's journey. In the year 2000, we moved to uh, Los Angeles, and we started doing some hiking in the mountains. And, it was one New Year's morning. She goes, do you hear that? I'm like, hear what? She goes, you're not lifting your feet. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I'm trying to enjoy the peacefulness here, yet it's clomp, drag, clomp, drag. Can you just pick up your feet? I'm like, oh, sure. And I try and I'm like having troubles, but not making a lot of noise. I realized I was having troubles figuring out my gait. Uh, but I didn't think anything of it. I thought, well, maybe I'm out of shape or I'm overweight or, you know, I've never been 30 before. Maybe this is what getting old is like. Uh, and then as time went on, I collected more symptoms. Uh, and, you know, through the, through the journey, we went to Seattle and we went back to California. And then I got a job in, uh, in Vancouver, uh, Canada, and we moved there. And shortly after we moved to Canada, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Uh, and I had collected about seven different symptoms, you know, I, it, but it was the tremor uh, that sent me to the doctor. I was uh, talking to my son and I was handing him a glass of water like this. And, and it was sh shaking like that, but it was spilling over the sides. And he goes, Dad, why are you shaking so bad? And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, shouldn't you see a doctor? I'm like, I probably should, son. Uh, and that's that started... Uh, started us trying to figure out what was going on. At first they thought it was MS, uh, and then they sent me to the neurologist for Parkinson's and he's like, yeah, you got Parkinson's. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know if I was gonna die. I didn't know if I was gonna be of any use to my industry anymore. Like, am I gonna get fired from my job? Like, how does that work? What happens now? Like, all of our plans that we had just seemed to like go poof. There was no way to plan. There was no way to prepare. Uh, you had no control. Uh, the only thing I could control is me. And I controlled myself straight to the liquor store for quite a while. Um, I'm not proud of that, but it's what it came down to. Um, and then I'm listening to some podcasts and I, I'm listening to the Michael J. Fox Foundation podcast. And I hear this voice and it's Ray Dorsey, Dr. Ray Dorsey from Rochester. I'll never forget it. And he's like, listen, if people with Parkinson's don't start sharing their stories, we will never raise enough attention to raise enough money to do enough research to do anything with Parkinson's, let alone cure it. And I thought, oh my God, there it is. I'm a storyteller. I've been a storyteller all my life. Here I am in Canada with a national platform. We've got radio stations, TV stations, websites, and, and I'm sitting here sulking. How can I expect anybody else to tell their story if I'm not willing to tell mine? And so that's when I started the podcast, When Life Gives You Parkinson's. And that, that podcast, uh, we're now in our fourth season, but it led to me going to the World Parkinson Congress in Kyoto. And while I was there, I realized I was not alone. And we show up in this room and there's like 70 people that are YOPD, that are like around my age. I've never been in a room with a couple of them, let alone 70 of them. And I thought, holy crap. We can do something. We've got we've got leverage here. These are 70 people that are already saying, I'm an advocate for Parkinson's, or they wouldn't be at the conference. So that's when we really started to say, let's do something. And it was the next spring, right, right as the pandemic of, of COVID was starting, 
that the book Ending Parkinson's Disease came out by Dr. Ray Dorsey and his colleagues, Michael Okun, Todd Chair, and Boz Bloom. And we latched onto that. And a lot of us got together on Zoom and we started talking about the book. And they're like, hey, you know, it's a prescription for action. You guys gonna do anything? I'm like, oh man, Ray always gets me into these things. Yeah, okay, we'll do something. And that's when we launched PD Avengers. It, it, it's interesting. I, I get a lot of people uh, who approach me because I'm the president of the PD Avengers going, what can I do? And I turn it around on them and go, what can you do? I'm a storyteller. So I started a podcast, which started a movement um, and served people. But you may have a different superpower than I do, probably do. So what is it? What can you do? What can you add to the community? How can you make a difference? Because we all can do it. We all have something. It doesn't matter what it is. How do you apply it? How do you make it matter? Do something. We need you. If you want to know who's going to change the future of Parkinson's disease, you just met him. Larry Gifford and his friends, Dr. Sonia Mather and Tim Haig, have formed PD Avengers, a global grassroots organization that's seeking to end, eradicate, get rid of, prevent, and otherwise abolish Parkinson's disease from the face of the earth. And they're going to do it with your help. They have over 4,000 members from every state in the United States, from every province in Canada, and from over 70 different countries. But they can't do it alone. Join the PD Avengers like I have. You can do so for free by just going to pdavengers.com. And Mr. Gifford has a great gift, and that gift is storytelling. But we all have gifts, you and me. And we need to apply those gifts to preventing and ending Parkinson's disease.